Good morning, everybody. I want to thank the ASH uh, press folks for allowing us to present this. I'm presenting this on behalf of the lead author, Alicia Bosworth, as well as uh, the other authors. Um, Alicia could not be here today, and so here I am. Uh, we're going to be talking about, or I am going to be talking about, um, cognitive impairment after allogeneic hematopoietic cell transplantation, um, focusing on the intensity of the transplantation and a very brief glimpse at what might be causing that cognitive impairment. So um, in terms of background, we all are quite <coughs> well aware of the fact that impaired cognition is increasingly recognized um, after transplantation. In fact, a couple of years ago, we had presented on the fact that impaired cognition results is, is partially responsible for the inability to return to work after transplantation. Um, but there are gaps in previous research. Um, we have not looked at cognitive functioning after reduced intensity transplantation. We and others have not previously looked at healthy control comparison groups in a rigorous fashion, and um, we are barely scratching the surface of trying to understand the pathogenesis of what actually happens when patients develop cognitive impairment after transplantation. So the current study addresses these gaps. It includes patients with both full and reduced intensity transplantation. It includes healthy control comparison groups. And then it attempts to understand the pathogenesis by testing testing the hypothesis that patients who have shorter telomere lengths could play a role in cognitive impairment after transplantation. So just to tell you what telomeres are, telomeres are like these caps. They're repetitive DNA protein structures. They cap the ends of the chromosomes and they protect the chromosomal integrity. As we age, as we all are, and Dr. Miller especially, um, <laughs> telomere shortening occurs with each cell division. But when somebody gets chemotherapy and radiation, it really hastens that chemo telomere shortening. And what's also known is that glial cells in the brain are mitotic, they divide, and they're also susceptible to telomere shortening. Also, what is known and not shown on the slide is that this telomere shortening from the blood samples correlates with severity of Alzheimer's disease. So hence our desire to study this. Um, how did we do this? We conducted a two-year prospective longitudinal study. Um, on the top panel is patients who underwent uh, transplantation. We um, assessed them prior to transplantation at six months, one year, and two years, and then recruited an age and sex-matched healthy control group and assessed them at the same time points. Uh, we used a two-hour battery of standardized neurocognitive tests. There were 14 tests that assessed eight domains. Healthy control scores were used to correct for transplant patient scores for practice effects. And what are practice effects? Once you do a set of tests, and then six months later you do the same set of tests, you can obviously perform those tests in a much better fashion than you would or quicker, um, and you can in that way appear to be improving cognitively. And what we did was we used the healthy controls to correct for that effect. We also drew blood to obtain DNA prior to transplantation, and we used a qPCR-based telomere assay to assess the, t the relative telomere lengths in these patients. We um, used the, the median value of that telomere length to divide patients into those with short and long telomere lengths, and then the medical record abstraction and self-report of demographic data was completed, the study characteristics. So here we have 242 patients. Um, of them, 125 were available at two-year time point. The large number uh, of the attrition was because of the fact that of death, as well as uh, too ill to participate. Amongst those who could participate, 80% did at the two-year time point. Um, they were 49 years of age at the time of transplant. 62% were males. Two-thirds were uh, had acute leukemia. Uh, roughly half of them were full intensity transplant uh, recipients and half reduced intensity, and then 58% had unrelated donor transplants. Um, we had blood samples for telomere level analysis, uh, length analysis for 142 patients. As a comparison group, we had 98 uh, con healthy controls um, and 45 available at the two-year time point at the time the study was done. Um, they matched in age, and um, there were uh, more females amongst the participants, the healthy controlled participants. 
So um, here I'm going to show you in the next slide the results of uh, the transplants compared with the cognitive functioning in transplant recipients compared to healthy controls. And what we found was that our allogeneic transplant recipients had poorer cognitive functioning than healthy controls. And these were, uh, uh, the domains that were particularly affected were executive function, processing speed, verbal fluency, and fine motor dexterity. So just to describe you what executive function means in the context of what we are doing out here, Dr. Miller, not to pick on him too much, is sitting here and trying to see who's the next speaker. He's trying to figure out what the rest of his day looks like, and he's also trying to figure out which bar to go to at night. So all of that combined, and then to surface up and be able to decide which questions to moderate and how to ask would constitute good executive functioning. Processing speed, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, how quickly you process from the study, how quickly you distill what are the, the salient points of the study. Verbal fluency, obviously, is again quite clear. Mark first came to me and I was absolutely tongue-tied, couldn't talk to him. That was in my, in my low verbal fluency at that point. And fine motor dexterity is more of a motor function than a um, uh, cognitive function, but it does involve some function from the brain telling you how to use that motor function. So here are the results for our um, transplant patients as compared to the healthy controls. The higher the scores, the better the cognitive functioning, and we can see that there's a difference at all time points for our transplant recipients as compared to healthy controls, and this has been adjusted for age, race, and income, and I'm showing you just the results of the healthy controls, oh, sorry, for executive kind of <coughs> function. Um, then we restricted the analysis only to transplant recipients, and what we found was that patients who were older men, I'm sorry for Dr. Miller, um, Hispanic ethnicity, low education, low income, high fatigue, but particularly full intensity transplant recipients were more likely to have poor cognitive function after transplantation. Um, so here I'm going to show you the results of the study for as by, by conditioning um, uh, intensity, and what, I found, what we found was that patients who received full intensity conditioning were at risk for cognitive impairment, and these were for executive function, again, processing speed, verbal speed, visual memory, but what was most important was that patients who received reduced intensity condition were generally spared, and here are the results showing you that finding, that in green light, higher uh, cognitive functioning redu for reduced intensity in orange, um, full intensity recipients in blue, healthy controls. So showing again that reduced intensity uh, patients had comparable cognitive function and executive function here as compared to the healthy controls. So now moving on to telomere lengths. When we looked at the male telomere, male HCT recipients, there was no association between telomere lengths and cognitive impairment. But amongst female transplant recipients, the telomere shortening prior to HCT was associated with poorer cognitive function after transplantation, and this was in executive functioning, processing speed, verbal speed, and working memory. Um, and here again are the findings showing again that patients who had longer telomere lengths had better cognitive functioning as compared to the shorter telomere lengths, and here it's showing it for executive functioning again. So in summary, um, allogeneic transplant recipients have poorer cognitive functioning than healthy controls, that it is primarily the full intensity conditioning patients who are driving this um, lower cognitive impairment. The patients with reduced intention, intense, intensity conditioning are relatively spared, and that telomere shortening prior to uh, HCT or transplantation is associated with poor cognitive functioning after transplantation, and this is restricted to females. And this study has identified these vulnerable subpopulations, and there is a need to develop uh, future interventions targeted towards these patients, as well as to understand the pathogenesis um, of this outcome. And this is where I'll end. Thank you.